first got to the Connecticut Sun, did you have any idea the scope of what was in front <laughs> of you? Uh, let's see. I guess yes and no. I mean, obviously, the, the job was explained, you know, in terms of what I was going to be in charge of and kind of the overall, you know, vision for what they wanted this position um, to do. But I don't, without any prior experience in a front office, I think it was very much very new to me. Um, exciting in a lot of ways. Uh, I knew that there was some challenges in front of me, but I also knew I was stepping into a very successful organization, both on and off the floor. And I was just more excited to learn, um, to be able to add to, um, you know, the success of the team and to the front office and kind of put my own little spin on things. So, and your leadership has certainly shown itself well on the court. I mean, last year, a record-setting regular season, yeah. and this year still in the top half of the standings. What would you grade the first few games <laughs> that the Sun has had so far? Well, I don't know that I can take a whole lot of responsibility for success on the court. I mean, this team was built by Kurt Miller and his staff, and they've just done a tremendous job of coming together over the years, developing. Um, the players have developed so much individually. Uh, I think we're one of the few teams that have players that have gone from, you know, kind of ex obscurity almost to all-stars and most improved players and MVP candidates. Um, so just a testament to the women that we have in the organization and the coaching staff that has, has put this, this team together. And we're just really excited about what we think they can accomplish. I mean, the state of Connecticut is used to championships. So there's a high expectation and a high standard um, when you play basketball in the state. Um, and these women are up for that challenge. And so this team... This league is probably as, as talented and deep as I've ever seen it. Um, so when you say top half of the league, that's because there's five teams that are all within a half a game of each other at the top of the standing. So it's pretty remarkable, you know, how competitive it is. And that journey to a championship is just so difficult. And you need a lot of things to go your way, not just talent and coaching, but also a little bit of luck. So we're hoping down the stretch we have some of that too. And speaking of the impact in the community, what would you say – have you enjoyed the mm -hmm. most about what the organization does off the court? Because you mentioned how yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I'm really proud of our Change Can't Wait platform. You know, it, it, it really encompasses all the social justice initiatives that we find important. And um, that's kind of Morgan Tuck's baby as she started about the same time I did last spring was to really elevate that program, find out what the players' interests were, um, and then go out and, and make a difference. And so whether it's a, a partnership with the NAACP of Norwich or this year we're having all of our Commissioner Cup proceeds go to the League of Women Voters because we're you know, interested in civic engagement, um, if it's uh, our Change Can't Wait night where we're honoring women that are inspiring or we're celebrating women of Title IX or we're trying to showcase our businesses of the month, which are typically uh, minority-owned businesses in our community that we're trying to elevate. Um, but most importantly, you know, our players, they talk a lot, the players of the WNBA, they talk about issues that are important to them. Um, you know, whenever there's a crisis in our country, you can see that the WNBA players are the first ones to speak up. And so it's our job to make sure we're amplifying and elevating their voices and their messages as, as women of this league, as leaders in our country, um, and to make sure that we're supporting them from the top down. The perfect time to segue because last week of June, it was very much a mixed bag. Mm. You celebrate the 50th anniversary of yes. Title IX one day. 24 hours later, the Supreme yeah. Court overturns Roe v. Wade. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious, because the W has always shown itself to be the league that does all the talking yeah. and really takes that first step when it comes to social movement, what was the mood in the organization like for mm -hmm. the, the minutes leading up to it? And what do you plan yeah. to sort of do in your role, both <laughs> as the leader and the organization moving forward? Yeah, you know, I think that what's important is for always for me to remember who I'm leading, you know, and um, it's it's not just Roe v. Wade, but it's 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 social justice throughout the country and making sure that our players feel supported in again what's important to them. And the WNBA put out a statement along with the NBA um, about Roe v. Wade and and their opinion on it, and it was important that. It, that the way that it read was that they will always support gender and health equity, um, you know, in everything that they do. Um, that they will always support freedom of speech and freedom of decision. And that's what our women are about, is they, they don't want to 
push their opinions on other people. They want to emphasize that they have the freedom to make their own decisions about what happens with their bodies, make their own decisions about their futures. Um, and the WNBA from the leadership position has always supported um, the reproductive health and options for our players. They have supported the freedom of speech for our players. They have supported the freedom to protest, peacefully protest that our players have done. And we're one of the only leagues that continue to peacefully protest at times the national anthem um, because we want our fans to know that, yeah, we want you to support us as basketball players, but we're also people. And my team is made up of 11 black women and they want our fans to know that sometimes they don't feel like they get treated in this country the same way as white people do. And so when they protest the flag or actually just the anthem or they protest against Roe v. Wade um, or they protest against racial injustices in our country, um, it, it's their message to say, hey, you know, we're more than just basketball players. We're women, we're mothers, we're sisters, we're brothers, um, we're daughters. Um, and they're role models, and they want, to st they want to be the courage and be the voice for so many voiceless people in the United States. And I, I couldn't be more proud to be part of a league where I get to be a leader of women like that. Switching gears just slightly, going from the pros a little bit to college, yeah. especially since celebrating the 50th anniversary of Title IX, you have seen it firsthand as a coach, mm -hmm. as a player. I'm curious, when you started to play the game of basketball, how did you see opportunities unfold for you? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's funny. I, I, when I started working at the University of Hartford, I was hired by Pat Miser. And one of the things that I knew, the first thing I knew about her was that she gave out the first women's basketball scholarship at Penn State back in 1974 which is when I was born. <laughs> and so I think about Pat giving me this opportunity, right, to be a 25-year-old first-time head coach of women at the University of Hartford. Um, and I think about how many people, not women, not only did they not have the chance to be a coach, but they didn't even have a chance to go to college to play basketball, uh, and let alone play basketball for free on a scholarship. Um, and so I think every year that I was in coaching and obviously now continuing into pro basketball, we want to celebrate women and girls in sports. We want to celebrate Title IX. We want our players to know what Title IX means. We want our fans to know what the Title IX legislation did for us women. I wouldn't be sitting here as the top executive of a WNBA team if it weren't for Title IX. And I always want my players, I want my own kids, but I want people to know that there's so many women that paved the way for me to be sitting here. And that's why the end of June was hard, because you had, you know, Title IX celebration one night and the overturning of Roe v. Wade the next night. You, you're celebrating all of these freedoms and all of these opportunities given to women, and then in the next breath, you feel like you're getting that taken away. And I think that's why these women are so important, is because um, they're going to continue to fight for their freedom. Um, they're going to continue to fight for the opportunity, not just for girls to play basketball or girls to be presidents of WNBA teams or be broadcasters for ESPN, um, but for women and girls in general to have the freedom to make their own choices in the future. And that's what the WNBA is all about. And that's why I'm proud to be the president of the Connecticut Sun. As you look toward the future, not just off the court, but we'll go back on the court mm -hmm. for a second. Yeah. What are some things that you hope to see, yeah. not just from your team, but so, sometimes your fans as well? Yeah, you know, I, I've been so excited about the crowds that we've been getting um, in the last couple games. I think summer has started and school is out and people are looking for fun things to do. And coming to a Connecticut Sun game at the Mohegan Sun Arena is a fun thing to do. And um, you get to see the best in the world at this sport. Uh, it's so inspiring. Um, you get to come to a game and it's festive and there's, you know, music and there's contests and there's ch chances to win prizes and uh, get autographs and cheer with your family or your basketball team or your siblings. Uh, you know, I just think it's a great uh, family outing. It's a great friend outing. Um, and then you look at what we produce on the floor and we don't win every game. I mean, sometimes in the years past, it feels like we do because we won so many games at home. 
Uh, but our women always are in there. They're always competing. They're always fighting. They're playing the game the right way. Um, they play for each other. They make extra passes. They celebrate the successes. And they're showing you know, young girls and boys out there what it means to play selfless basketball. And I think that's why women's basketball is so special, is because it can be played in a way that it was invented to be played. Um, and so you get to come to a great atmosphere. You get to enjoy an afternoon or an evening. Um, but most importantly, you get to see great basketball. And speaking of that great basketball, obviously you brought back the lion's share of last year's yeah. team that had that record-setting regular season. Mm -hmm. Coming back as Courtney Williams, mm -hmm. it seems like a big family reunion. Yep. What is it about this year's team yeah. that makes it so special and even different yeah. from last year? Well, you know, Courtney Williams just adds an element that is so fun. You know, she is a fan favorite. These fans love her because she's engaging, because she plays the game with joy. And I think last year we won so many games that there, by the end there was a lot of tension and pressure building up, and it maybe didn't always look like we were playing the game with joy. Um, and Courtney reminds, I th reminds all of us what this game is about. And so we've had our, our stretch of, of bad luck. You know, we had Jasmine Thomas go out early this season with an injury. We had Alyssa Thomas go out last season with an injury. And this team is, is I think, the definition of resiliency. They just find a way. Um, and so they bring a lot of joy to my life, to our fans' life. And, you know, I think that it's, you know, every game is a battle. Um, the strength of the WNBA is on full display. The depth of this league and the depth of the rosters is on full display this year. And it is going to be quite a journey to get to that WNBA championship for any of us. Um, so to be able to come out and see a battle every night and see competitiveness every night and see that joy every night from our team playing for each other, I, it's, it's definitely something you don't want to miss. To close our time, for those who have never been to a okay. Connecticut Sun game, for those who have seen or, or not really had the whole experience, yeah. what's your manifesto to them? <laughs> Why should they make sure they have every yeah. game here at Mohegan Sun circled on the schedule? I will say if you've never watched a WNBA game in person, you are missing out. The athleticism, the power, the physicalness of the WNBA game compared to college is completely different. And you will be in awe of these women and what they're capable of doing physically. Um, the environment is tremendous. Is that gonna is that gonna matter? No, sorry. We're good. No, don't, okay. Don't worry about it. Let me yep. just kind of pick up where I left off there. The physicalness. Hmm? You're yeah. talking about the physical yeah. difference okay. between the yeah. two. All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so, you know, in addition to that, um, you'll see great coaching. You're going to see a great fan, fan atmosphere. Um, there's a lot more festiveness in a professional basketball game with music playing and contests being had all the time. Uh, and then it's a great setting, you know. I think people don't realize how much there is to do here at the Mohegan Sun. And so our arena being easy to get to, free parking, tons of places to eat, and then you get to go watch this special group of women against another special group of women play basketball, you definitely don't want to miss that. I mean, we've got some tremendous games coming up against the best teams in the league in Vegas and Chicago. We've got Sue Bird's last game probably ever in the state of Connecticut. We've got Diana Taurasi coming back. We've got Sylvia Fowles, who's retiring after this year. It's the last time that people will get a chance to see her play. You just don't want to miss out on these, these once-in-a-lifetime legends that are going to be coming in our arena in addition to John Quell Jones and Alyssa Thomas and Courtney Williams and the Tisha Heideman, some of the most exciting players in the game to watch. And you'll have a chance, at least the fans will have a chance to see them next week, three of them mm -hmm. on their way to Chicago as yes. All-Stars. Um, early pick John Quell Jones, All-Star came in. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, I, I would like to say she was pretty close last year. I think Arike, Arike edged her out for the All-Star Game MVP. So I don't think it's an early pick. I think it's a good pick for, for John Quell Jones to be winning this year's uh, All-Star Game MVP.